Hello, everyone, and welcome to today's stream. I'm Eddie Ernest Cambard, and I'll be your low-key entertainment for this today. Actually, a little different today. Today, I'm actually going to be your low-key chef for today as we venture through the Heroes Feast cookbook and make our way through some awesome recipes from some different cultures in D&D lore. It's going to be a lot of fun, and this is definitely one of the most ambitious uh, streams that I have ever tried to do before, both in terms of just uh, tech requirement and also in terms of just overall time commitment. I've literally been here in the kitchen uh, most of the day yesterday and all day today trying to get things ready for today. Also, a quick little shout out. I think I saw you in here earlier. Your name went flying by before I even had a chance to see who you are. Gamma with two M's. Thank you so much for the raid. Really appreciate that, friend. Let's give you a shout out here real quick. Gamma with just Thank you so much for, uh, oops, that was not the right key for that. Shout out, Gamma with just two M's. There we go. Thank you so much for throwing that raid over our direction. Really appreciate that. Also, I saw you in there, Crean. Hello, Crean. Hello, Thomas. Hello, Audio Valkyrie. Hello, Queer Adventure Time. And I, oh, G-Dub's in here as well. And Thomas. Man, there's a whole bunch of you in here. And I think I saw Luke in there earlier as well. We got all kinds of friends in here. Sorry if I missed your name. The chat's just going by so fast right now. I can't even keep track of all y'all. I see you in there, Noble Nerd. Hello, hello. Welcome. Hello, Mr. Guybrush. Welcome. And Nordic Geek. Hello, everyone. Welcome to today's stream. I'm super excited. I hope y'all are as excited as I am to try something a little bit different today. So, in case anyone is just coming in now, indeed, we are doing recipes from the Heroes Feast cookbook, which I happen to have right here. Uh, many of you happen to know the mysterious hand from the ether, otherwise known as my wife, managed to get me the copy of this book for Christmas, and I've been very excited to get an opportunity to actually try out some of these recipes uh, for the first time. So here is going to be my first time actually making a lot of these. And of course, uh, to get things started off right away, the first thing you got to do for a proper feast. We're gonna have three courses. We're gonna have an appetizer, we're gonna have a main course, and we're gonna have a dessert. But first things first, we definitely have to start out with a cocktail. And yes, Thomas, if you could hit the uh, shout outs, that would be super appreciated. Um, I keep on, I have a new setup that I'm doing for this particular stream. I had to do a whole bunch of new overlays and everything. So it's, uh, the tech stuff is definitely coming slowly but surely, but it's a work in progress. So, and thank you for the follow. Gamma with just two M's, really appreciate that friend. All right, without any further ado, let's go ahead and get a cocktail underway. Now, the first thing that we're going to do for today is going to be the Chilton Zombie, because it's fruity, it's rummy, and it just sounds like it's going to be a good match for just about everyone in this house. So we're going to go ahead and swap things over to our food cam here real quick. So to make a Chilton Zombie, it's a rum-based drink. I got myself a nice hand bottle of uh, Mount Gay Black Barrel Rum. So we're going to go ahead and throw in about five ounces of that real fast. I can get my jigger facing the right way. There we go. And start things out proper, making a right mess, because how else do you do things in the kitchen? All right, so we got our rum here, and then I've got uh, four ounces of pineapple juice and two ounces of orange juice, which I've went ahead and pre-measured just to make things a little bit easier. This is already going to be a right full mix right here. And then I've already pre-measured some uh, lime juice for us right here. We're going to put that in. And we get a little bit of bitters. Go ahead and just chuck that in here real quick. This is going to be a real full uh, beverage here. But it's a good thing that it's being drunk by two people, because otherwise this would just be way too much. And, uh, of course, we've got just a little bit of country that we're going to throw in here as well. So let's just pop that little half ounce of country. There we are. Gorgeous. It puts the lime in the coconut. Yes, come on, production value. All right. So let's go ahead and get this guy underway here. Of course, you know, the proper shake over the shoulder. Now, I've known a couple of people who go to bartending school who say that pouring a shaken drink into an ice glass is a faux pas. But you know what? Uh, I'm trying to 
while I do many things on my own way when it comes to recipes, for today I'm trying to follow the recipe as true as possible. So for today's purposes, the recipe says to pour it into ice. We're going to pour it into ice. So let's go ahead and get our glasses here. It does call for a highball. I don't have those, unfortunately, so we're going to use these instead. I've got my strainer here. It's a good thing these glasses are actually significantly fuller than I expected them to be. All right, top these off with a little bit of seltzer. In this case, I'm using Topo Chico because that's what we use in this household, specifically thanks to the mysterious hand from the ether. And when you're going to call for a uh, maraschino cherry, it's always got to be a Luxardo. There are no other maraschino cherries. Go ahead and just top one of those in there. Bloop. People need to know, did I wash my hands? Of course I did. I always wash my hands before cooking. All right. So here we have our Chilton Zombie, a couple of them here. But see, I can't drink two of these on my own, so maybe, oh. I see, we have the mysterious hand from the ether who has kindly come to uh, oblige their uh, cocktail as well. So, cheers. That is fruity, fizzy, and very pineapple-y. So, good stuff. That looks like it's uh, very much approved by the mysterious hand from the ether. All right. So... As much as I have fun with this, this isn't a cocktail show. We're here for a cooking show. So let us let me go ahead and clean up my mess here real quick, and we'll go ahead and get started with our appetizer. All right, that gets all of that out of the way. Let's see, when are we going to get Mysterious Hand from the Ether merch? The people need to know. This We will figure this out. That uh, What kind of merch would you be interested in? This is the right question to ask, Thomas. Mm, this is actually really refreshing. All right, so three courses over the course of today. We have our appetizer, which is going to come from the realm of the elves. For our appetizer today, we are doing a high harvest puree, which is going to be essentially kind of like a mashed butternut squash. So not quite a soup. Calling it a soup wouldn't really be quite right, but basically just like a mashed butternut squash seasoned uh, with olive oil and spices and things like that. And garlic, of course, lots and lots of garlic. Uh, and this is going to be the very first thing that y'all will notice when it comes to me making modifications to recipe. I usually try to stick to the recipe as much as I can. For, at least I will for this because it's a, a particular cookbook. But garlic, you never use enough garlic in a recipe. The recipe calls for three. I think five sounds more like it. Elves know how to do it right. That is correct. Okay. So let's go ahead and start things out here with our butternut squash, which is to be uh, peeled. And I decided I was going to do, I debated whether or not I was going to do this part live, but I figured, you know what, just for giggles, we may as well do it. Uh, there's going to be a couple of pieces of the show today that we're going to swap between uh, some pre-recorded stuff, just because trying to do all this stuff in one sitting is just a lot. But I still try to keep things interesting for y'all today. It's going to be a lot of fun regardless. I just hope y'all are here for a good time. I had a real good time getting all this prepared for today, so I hope y'all enjoy it half as much as the fun that I had putting it together for y'all. Now the recipe calls for uh, one giant four pound squash. Alas, I do not have a giant four pound squash. So instead today we're gonna use two slightly smaller ones. Get all this carved down together here. Yes, there was a, a lot of prep put in uh, place for today. Uh, uh, Nikki can attest to this. I spent the, aka the mysterious hand from the ether. I 
was in the kitchen a majority of the day uh, yesterday. And today I spent a majority of the day both in the kitchen and in the editing room. So there was definitely a lot that went into making today happen. But y'all asked for it, and so who am I to say, no, I'm not going to entertain the crowd? All right, let's get the last of these little peels off here. I just realized the one thing I don't have right now is a spoon, so I'm going to have to go grab that real quick in just a second. Hello, Uncommon Gray, and hello, Lizzie. Give my uh, regards back to her as well. Also, y'all, I apologize in advance. I am trying to stay on top of the chat, but there are just so darn many of you right now, and just I'm doing my best to keep up with y'all while also trying to not make sure I make sure I don't screw up the recipe I'm doing here. So, I am going to try my best to keep up with y'all, but forgive me if I'm a little slow to respond on occasion. All right, got that there. Let's get that end off, and let's go ahead and get you in half, and then I'm going to grab a spoon so we can scoop out those guts. Cook and burst us, Satan! And now we scoop out the guts. Ra ha ha ha. Didn't know this stream was going to go violent, did you? Of course, demand my undivided attention while I wield sharp objects. Look at that. It didn't stand a chance. All right. Set that to the side here. Let's get these other seeds out. It's a sharp spoon indeed. And look at that. Already making a mess. There is no cooking without making a mess in the kitchen. This is how you know a kitchen is well used. When it's nice and messy, that's when you got a well-used kitchen. We have a chef fighter we made for a giveaway winner. That's awesome. Hide your kids! We've got violent squashing! Oh no! Not the violent squashing! All right, and that last little bit of seed just does not want to come out. Let's get you out there. There we are. Also, hello, laughing is dand. Welcome to the chaos in the kitchen. All right, I'm going to go ahead and just chop this guy up just to get it out of my way. Recipe does call for it to be cubed. Let's go ahead and get those out of the way here. Dan, Sam, and I got our second shots today. Awesome. Congrats. I'm happy to hear that. So many people getting their second shots now. That's wonderful news. Also, hello for the fo thank you for the follow. Laughing is damned. Really appreciate that, friend. Just get all that beautiful, glorious butternut squash into that bowl there. Now the interesting thing is that they made all these recipes based on. Uh, sort of what they thought would be sort of the defining nature of each of the cultures in question. For the elves, uh, which this recipe came from, this is definitely, uh, you know, very vegetable heavy, very, you know, uh, kind of, I mean, I wouldn't call it, you know, hippie per se, but definitely very, like, you know, eco-conscious uh, and uh, just very, like, health-conscious food. So definitely uh, this is going to be a stark contrast compared to what the uh, main course and the dessert for today are going to be. But, you know, figured if we're going to have such hearty uh, other elements of the meal, then we may as well have a slightly healthier appetizer. And, yeah, the gang's all here. We got so many folks. Even Amy. Hello, Amy. I haven't seen you in freaking forever. Welcome, welcome. We got so many friends here today, and thank you so much for the follows and for hanging out today. I really hope y'all are going to have a blast here today. 
And yeah, we did miss you on Tuesday, Thomas. I hope you're still well. My audio seems to be stuttering in a weird way. Uh, yeah, that's uh, hopefully not going to be a continuing thing. It may also be possible that the battery for my uh, mic adapter might be running low. I might have to check that after uh, this portion right here. So we'll take a look at that uh, during the break at some point. Here today, some Sword Coast gave some seafood to play with. Gotta love some seafood. I, haven't ha I have not fully explored through all the recipes just yet. I actually haven't taken a look at a lot of the human recipes because y'all apparently were determined for me to do any of the other races but human. So here we are. All right, let's go ahead and get you off as well. I just came to realize I chopped that before I peeled it, but it's all right. We can do things out of order because guess what? You know what? Chaotic neutral is my way of life. So, you know, screw the rules. It's more fun this way. And the sub! Thank you so much, Cream. Much appreciated there, friend. Thank you so much for that gift sub there. Human food is so passe, it's been done. You know, it's funny that you say that, because the human food is actually probably some of the most diverse food uh, in the cookbook, because, you know, there's so many different variants on human. Uh, so therefore, they actually, I think, actually have probably some of the biggest, uh, the biggest number of pages in the book, just from that sheer fact alone. So I'm actually very curious to check out some of the human recipes for that exact reason. And another gift sub. Thank you so much, friend. Much appreciated. And you've also helped me come to realize that none of my alerts are working right now, which is good to know. I'll have to make sure I fix that if I ever try to do one of these again. But yes, thank you, thank you so much for those gift subs. For the love of food. For the noms. All right, let's get this squash underway here. Get rid of the last of those guts. Uh, for those of you with weak constitutions, uh, look away now, because uh, there's some serious disembowelment about to happen here. Funny thing, my DM has basically said that elephant food is the same as Greek Mediterranean. I believe that. Oh, yes, that's right. Someone uh, did uh, redeem a karaoke earlier, I believe. I totally forgot to honor that. Uh, let's see. We're gutting the squash. We're gutting the squash. Taking out the guts and rip it up. Vermosh. Because butternut squash is the way to go, and I just rather uh, mash it so. Because unlike the way in Idaho, it's butternut squash today. Mining the seeds right out. It's lots of fun, there is no doubt. When there are gets to have, you go and carve away. That was improv on the spot, folks, so, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll take my bow now. <laughs> we combined multiple shanties and songs there. I have no idea where I was going with it, but you know what? It happened. All right, let's get the last of those guts out of there. Butternut squash roasted with salt and pepper is delicious. Admittedly, my favorite form of butternut squash is actually in either soup or ravioli form. So I'm actually very curious to see how this pans out, because this is kind of more of a mashed squash, which is a little bit different than what I'm used to. Grilled. It must be grilled. Oh, we had a survey go, a prediction going. What were we predicting today? I don't even know what we were predicting. What sort of trouble are you getting me into here, Thomas? Butternut squash cubed up in a slow cooker with chicken soup stew stuff is amazing. True story. First prediction was if I washed my hands. I most certainly did wash my hands, thank you. 
I mean, I have it. I have had it said in multiple households before, though. It's usually better to not wash your hands because that's where you get the special seasoning from. Man, this one just does not want to cut. True story. All right. We need a, we need a content warning for unwashing hands. <laughs> All right. We've got our squash nice and chop head. Now, here's the interesting thing that I'm a little perplexed by with this recipe. It actually calls... Yeah, watching the squash slip is nervous making for sure. It's uh, <laughs> definitely bouncing around there a lot. Uh, but one of the things that's interesting about this recipe, this recipe states specifically, do not peel garlic. I'm very perplexed by this. But again, we're going to follow the recipe. So here we are. I'm very confused by this as well. I'm probably going to have to pull the husks at the end. So we have a couple cloves here. I'm going to grab a couple more just because that's nowhere near enough. There's a couple more. And there's one there. All right, that's a good like five or six cloves in there. That sounds about right. So now we've got our tray here. Oh, yeah, always more garlic than the recipe states. Now let's get a little olive oil in there. Mix this up right good. Nice and coated. Salt, pepper, are there vampires present? <laughs> they wish. Even they might find a delight in this recipe. All right, that's all nice and mixed there. So now I got to get a cookie sheet for this. Good thing I already got one prepared. We'll go ahead and just get that all up in there nicely. That seed out of there. That doesn't need to be there. Look at that. Look at that glorious squash there. All right, and I've already taken the liberty of uh, preheating my oven to 425, which is the necessary temperature for this recipe. So now we've uh, not to do at this point, but to put it in the oven and wait. So while we're doing that, first things first, the most important thing. Make sure you have another sip of your lovely cocktail. Then uh, why don't we go ahead and throw this off to uh, Other Eddie, who's going to be working on our main course for tonight. Other Eddie, you got this? Thanks, Other Eddie. For our main course for today, we go to the realm of the dwarves 
And of course, we're going to be doing Miner's Pie, a nice hearty meal that's going to be ground beef and vegetables as the filling and potatoes for the crust. And of course, in proper dwarven fashion, it's going to include a healthy dose of ale. Let's get started. All right, first things first, we're going to go ahead and get our vegetables chopped, starting with our onion. Go ahead and get this sliced up and diced nice and small pieces. Watch my absolutely professional knifemanship. This onion proved to be a little bit tougher than I was expecting, so my, my cuts weren't quite as even as I was hoping that they would be. But you know what, at the end of the day, it's going to taste the same. Wait, this is uh, taking way too long. Let's, there we go, that's the stuff. Let's just speed this process up right, there we go. Much better. All right, now we got that out of the way. Let's move on to our leek. Now for these, I like to just chop them in half right in the middle here. That way you can kind of open it up, run it under the sink and get it all rinsed out and cleaned because these things are super tasty, but they just collect dirt like no other. So once we got that done, chop off the top bits here. And you can save them for later. There's other recipes and stuff you can use them for. I like to hang on to them for other stuff, but we're only gonna use the bottom bit for this particular recipe. And from there, just go ahead and just chop it up, dice it up. Once again, pro knife work here. Look at that. So good. And let's get the other one taken care of real quick. You can sort of see over the course of time as I start getting more comfortable with doing this in front of a camera how my technique starts improving slowly over time. chopped up. Now, I don't know a good way to chop garlic, so we're gonna go ahead and just chop the hell out of it like the perfect kitchen goblin that we are. If someone else can come up with a better method to chop garlic, please let me know. I'm all ears. Alright, so we heat up our pan, got a little oil here. Get our onion and leeks into the pan. Start giving that a good sizzle and cooking it up. Let's throw a bay leaf in there just for good measure. And yes, whenever we say to throw a bay leaf, we do mean to literally throw a bay leaf. That is the only way to put it into the pan. Alright, let's go ahead and just give that a nice stir, make sure that everything is getting a nice sizzle. Oh, you can already see a little bit of smoke coming up there, that's good. Just stir it up. We want to get them to sweat nicely. We don't want them to burn, so just keep them stirred around the pot every now and then. Pot. Pan. Add a little salt. And just give it a nice little stir up. getting a nice sizzle to it. You can see that the uh, onions are starting to become a little translucent. It's cooking up quite nicely.
Now we got our beef, about two pounds of ground beef. I use 80-20, but you can use whatever you like. And just break that up. Make sure we get rid of any clumps. Just keep moving it around the pot, make sure that everything gets a chance to cook, and make sure that we just don't have any lumps or any clumps or anything in here. So that meat gets nice and brown. I like to add a little salt and pepper. I tend to go pretty heavy on the pepper. I like having a little bit of kick to my food. Again, just keep mixing it, get rid of all those clumps. Alright, so jumping ahead, things have browned up pretty nicely. We're gonna go ahead and add in our garlic. And some uh, chopped thyme, get that all nice and mixed in. Now, the recipe only calls for three cloves of garlic, and that's just an absolute travesty. I always end up adding at least a couple more in than what the recipe calls for. Uh, now we get in some tomato paste. The recipe calls for four tablespoons, but that ends up being just about the entire can, so I don't like being that precise, so we're just going to go ahead and use the entire can here. Plus also I like to have the filling be nice and thick, and this will give it a nice thickness to it. Nice and mixed up, evenly coating everything.
There we are, getting that tomato paste. Nice coating on all the beef and all the vegetables. Look at that. Looking pretty good here. Let's go ahead and add our flour in. Nice thickening agent. And we're gonna go ahead and blend that in until it's just mixed. Made a little mess there. But you know what? That's what happens when you're in the kitchen. When you use the kitchen, you make a mess in the kitchen. All right, now it calls for some uh, chicken stock. You can use store-bought. I have my own homemade here that I pulled out of the freezer. I was trying to get it to thaw out a bit more, but it still stayed kind of frozen. But the heat of everything else will heat it up right quick. And of course, a healthy helping of ale. We're going to go ahead and use the heat of everything that's going on right here to melt out our stock and get that all nice and mixed in. Keep get that nice and mixed. Oh man, just look at that. Beauty divine right there. Alright, so everything's getting all nice and mixed in together. All the so stock is melted, it's all getting mixed in. So now we can go ahead and get our potatoes going. Set the oven to 450. And let's go ahead and get those potatoes chopped. Make sure that you peel about three pounds of potatoes. And we'll go ahead and get these all diced up into nice cubes. Now the absolutely most essential part to this step is to make sure that for every single potato you use a completely different knife technique. This is the discount bar secret right here. You just make sure that you completely change it up every single time so that you get completely inconsistent shapes and that way you just even out the, you know, the copacetic nature of everything. So yeah, we got one knife technique here. We're gonna go ahead and chop up the next one. It's gonna be a completely different knife technique because you know what, that's, that's just how we roll here because we are anything but consistent. There's potato number two, and there we are. Here we go, here we go. All right, chopping action. Oh no, we're still going for the slide. All right, we still got the slide technique here. All right, now we got the, ch there we go, chopping action. That's the stuff right there. 
Just changing it up, because can you predict me? No, I don't think so. We are a jack of all trades, after all, that means all chopping techniques. <laughs> How are we going to do it different this time? Alright, so it looks like we at least got the side chop being consistent each time, but now- There we go! Chop it, chop, chop, chop! <laughs> and back to the slide again. And you can tell that by this point I've gotten a lot more warmed up with the knife and have managed to, uh, get my technique a little bit more down pat. Also, once again, here on the discount bar, we are anything but consistent when it comes to continuity, so please ignore the delightful bowl of chopped vegetables that has already been simmering in the pan, but we, just for continuity purposes, apparently forgot was still there. So you know what? Uh, again, if you are here at the discount bar, we don't do continuity. This is the discount way. Man, by that last couple potatoes here, look at that beautiful slide technique there. Even I'm a little proud of me for that one. Oh, and you know, just when I got ahead of myself there. See, by the time we get to the last potato, we're gonna have this down just- look at that. It's gonna be absolutely perfect. See, just slide, slide, slide. Slide, slide, slide. Look at that. So from there, we're going to go ahead and get our uh, meat mixture out of the way right here so that we can go ahead and get our potatoes going. We're going to go ahead and turn on the burner over here. We're going to go ahead and move our pan over to the other burner. Let's get it out of the way. And we're going to go ahead and bring our pot with a strainer and the chopped potatoes inside of it. So we're going to go ahead and get that to a boil so it can steam. Throw a lid on there, and we want to make sure those potatoes are fork tender. That last little stir here, it's probably been simmering for long enough at this point.
got our veggies, got some frozen peas and some frozen corn. Uh, the recipe says that you're supposed to have it thawed out beforehand, but if it's still, these were still a little bit frozen, so I went ahead and just added them in, and once again, just using the heat of everything that is there to go ahead and get them up to the temperature we want. We are eventually going to want this mixture to cool down before we add the potatoes to the top of it, just so that we don't end up uh, cooking everything prematurely. that all nice and mixed in. Oh yeah, look at that. Meat, corn, peas, it's just glorious. Just delightful. Alright, so now we got our casserole dish. You do want to make sure that it's one that's broiler safe, so something that's able to take up to 500 degrees Fahrenheit. Take all that filling and just get it in that dish. Just spread it all out so you get a nice even coating on the bottom and nice and level on the top so that we can get our potatoes up on top there for the crust. You know, if there's one thing that a cooking show always needs, it's more beauty shots. Let's get another beauty shot in there. Oh, yeah. Oh, look at that. Just glorious. All right, now for the potatoes. We're gonna throw in a stick of butter for half a cup. Get some milk in there, whole milk preferably. Get our potatoes, which should be fork tender at this point. And now the recipe calls for a ricer. I don't have one of those, I'm old fashioned. So we're just gonna go ahead and use a potato masher and just mash this up by hand the old fashioned way. The recipe also says that the butter should be melted before you put it in there, but honestly the potatoes are hot enough at this point that it's just going to melt the butter for you and do the work, so why work twice as hard? Work smarter, not harder, I say. So go ahead and just get that all mashed up until all your dairy and all your potatoes just become this nice, smooth, potatoey glory. Add a little salt and pepper, because that's always necessary. It's a rule, season your food, never go without it. Add some Parmesan cheese. Mash it up.
And now you understand why the miner's pie is a nice hearty meal, because you got to work for it. You just mash it and mash it and mash it, just like when you're mashing down in the mines and getting all those glorious gems and gold. If necessary, you can always uh, roll a couple of hit dice for that short rest, but at the end of the day, you just need to get this nice and mashed up. Alright, and now get some eggs. Scramble them up. Now the important thing here is going to be to make sure that your potatoes are... Uh, relatively cool by the time that you add your eggs in, otherwise the eggs will start cooking in the hot potato and then you just wind up with a texture nightmare that you just, it's, it, it's not going to be bad, it's just not going to be quite what you want. So just make sure that the potatoes are cool, I, I still see a little bit of steam coming off here, but it's probably fine, yeah it feels about right. So just give that a nice little mash and then we'll get our eggs in here, just trying to get that last bit of heat out. We are, get those eggs in, and mixy, 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 mixy. There we are, nice and smooth. And off to our filling. Get all that glorious potatoey goodness up on top. And just make sure you get it all nice and spread out. You want to make sure you get all those corners. You kind of want to create a little bit of a seal on top with your potato. A nice little starchy seal just to keep everything in. Just make sure you work those edges and just get everything nice and even. Beautiful. And now last, but certainly not least, time to add the cheese. Got a mix of uh, Colby Jack here, just gonna go ahead and just sprinkle that all into a nice even layer on top. Nice and even. Beautiful. Look at that cheesy goodness. Oh. All 
All right, now we just pop this bad boy into the oven. We'll do that for about... Twenty minutes or so. Once it is done, you go ahead and turn off the oven and turn on the broiler and cook that for about another five minutes and so until you get this nice golden crust on top. Oh yeah, look at that. Now my seals weren't perfect there, some of the steam kind of escaped out the sides, but it's alright because it's still glorious. Sprinkle that with a little bit of freshly chopped parsley. There you got a meal fit for a dwarf. Alright. And just carefully carve ourselves a piece here through that nice crusty top. This is the hardest part of the process, get your bowl handy. And now, the best part of the meal. Warning, it is hot. And delicious. Fit for a dwarf. There lived a certain man in Russia long ago. He was big and strong in his eyes a flaming glow. Most people looked at him with terror and with fear. But in Moscow, chicks, he was such a lovely dear. And as my laptop flies off of the stand here. <laughs> oh, man, it just does not want to stay in place here. All right, let's see if we can get that to actually stay here something proper. There we go. <laughs> as we break everything here welcome back folks all right so now that we've got that taken care of by the way i gotta take another bite of this so this came out so fucking good mm. Mm. so good yes that was what we used for the uh the cocktail which by the way i'm gonna take another sip of, uh, i've been very much enjoying that during the uh the break here all right so the uh the squash has been in the oven for a little over a half hour. I let it go just a little long because it seemed like it wasn't quite cooking all the way through. So let's go ahead and grab that here real quick. All right. And now, of course, um, I did have some herbs to chop some thyme. Some thyme to chop some herbs. This is thyme in this container right here. We're going to put some thyme on the squash. Because thyme is a great herb. And the mysterious hand of the ether did not appreciate that pun. <laughs> Thank you all for the lurks, y'all. Appreciate y'all hanging out. All right, let's give that a little uh, mixy mixy here. You know, it's kind of funny. If I thought about this more thoroughly, I would have done the uh, the appetizer and everything in a slightly different order. But alas, you know, this is where we're at right now. So that's all timed up. Looking pretty nice here. We're going to go ahead and throw this in the oven for another 10 minutes. Da, da, da. Bad hand from the ether. Don't you dare. Not ready yet. 
All right, let's go ahead and uh, get this guy back in the oven for uh, roughly about another 10 minutes or so. So since we're back in another uh, holding pattern there, since we got to wait for that to stay in for another 10 minutes, this might be a great time for us to have a conversation about what's going to be for uh, dessert tonight. And for that, uh, we're going to have to go back to uh, Other Eddie again to help us out with that. Hey, uh, Other Eddie, could you help us out here? Thanks, Other Eddie. For our dessert for the evening, we are going to the realm of the halflings who enjoy the finer foods, lots of very uh, hearty meals, savory, sweet, you know it. And so what better dessert can we have for that than honey drizzled cream puffs? I know that my sweet tooth is tingling. Let's get started. All right, so first thing we're gonna grab a little bowl here and now we're gonna get some eggs. Now, a couple of them are going to have to be separated out. First thing, we're going to go ahead and separate out the egg white from this one. Just go ahead and get that uh, yolk separated out here. We're going to go ahead and save that for a little bit later, but for now, we just need to get the whites in the bowl for the time being. Yeah, oh, that's there. There we go. All right. Next, we're going to need uh, two eggs. This time, we'll use the whole egg. So the one in here, there we are. Add some vanilla. We'll go ahead and give that a good whisking. All right, nice and mixed. Now, excuse my continuity issues, because if you wanted a full price bar, you would have gotten no continuity errors, but here we are. Here's that egg yolk we separated out earlier. We'll add about a teaspoon of water. We're going to go ahead and give that a nice little whisking as well. This is going to be for the glaze on the puffs a little bit later. All right, let's get our saucepan, medium high heat. Here we're going to go ahead and mix in our water, our whole milk, our cubed up butter, some sugar. And some salt. And we're going to go ahead and give that a nice little mix. Now the main thing here is we do want to make sure that we mix it up good and till, until the uh, butter is melted. We don't want it to boil. So we want to get this nice and melted, heated up and mixed together, but just before it comes to a boil. There you are, it's looking like it's getting pretty nice and melted here. Getting pretty close, stirring it up, getting nice and combined, and uh, are we getting to a boil? Nope, not quite. Yeah, we're probably at the point now, we'll go ahead and turn that heat off. Yeah, there we are, heat's off. Just before boiling, nice and melted, very nice. So now that we got our liquid mixture here with our butter, our milk, or water, sugar, and salt, we'll add our flour in. Two thirds cup. And again, heat's off at this point, so we're going to go ahead and give this a nice mix right in the pot with no heat. 
Get that flour nice and combined and mixed in there. Until it kind of starts forming a cohesive ball. It's going to be very sticky. It's not going to be a very firm dough, but it's going to just be kind of this sticky, wet dough. There we are. Yeah, we got our ball, so it looks like it's holding together. It's becoming cohesive. Now that we got that going for us, we're going to go ahead and turn the heat back on, back to medium-high, just for a couple minutes. We're going to try to dry out the dough just a little bit. So we're going to go ahead and just press this against the walls of the pot. Just trying to get some of that excess moisture out. And keeping it moving, we don't want it to burn, we just want it to be a little bit of a drier consistency. Keep pressing that down, making sure it's nice and even heat distribution. Just pressing it, squeezing it, heating it up, just drying it out just a little bit. already feel it. We're starting to dry out a bit more. It's still nice and cohesive. It's not completely falling apart or anything, but just keep on pressing, pressing, just getting all that moisture out. There we are. Heat's off. Go ahead and take this off the heat, and we'll move on over to our food processor, because apparently gnomes have food processors, but you know what? We're going with it, because if we have the access to modern technology, then you know what? I'm just going to go for it, because I like making things easier. So yep, it's in the food processor. We're going to go ahead and lid this up. Now, once we get our last piece in here, we're going to remove the uh, feed tube. Leave that open and pulse it a couple of times. You can already see the steam sort of coming out. We want to pulse it a few times to try to get the heat out of the dough. Because next we're going to be adding in our egg mixture. And we want to try to avoid adding the egg mixture into hot dough if possible. So that the eggs don't just cook. So this is our mixture with the two eggs and the eggs, uh, egg white from the third egg. Going to add that in while pulsing so that it gets all nice and mixed together. And I'm just being extra thorough here. I just want to try to get this all nice and mixed together. And throughout this, you're probably going to have to scrape the sides a couple times. You don't want to overmix it, but we want to get it just nice and blended together. Let's go ahead and get that lid off, scrape down the sides, make sure that everything is getting nice and mixed together. And again, you do want to make sure that it's not hot when you put the eggs in. I did rush this a little bit, but it's it should be fine. But yeah, you want to make sure that you never add your egg mixture into hot dough. Otherwise you wind up with cooked eggs and then the texture and consistency is not going to be quite what you want. So we're just giving this one last little mix here, get everything all blended together. Alright, that should be good at this point. And what we're left with should be this really thick and just sticky sort of dough. Now 
Now from here, we'll go ahead and uh, get everything out of our container. Get yourself a plastic bag. I got myself here a uh, gallon size Ziploc, which will do just fine. And just get everything all scraped into the bag. And it is pretty thick, so just be careful when scraping it all up. You might not be able to get it all, but just try to scrape as much as you can out of the container. Get into the bag. Bear in mind, we are going to try to get all of it as much as possible to one corner, as we're going to turn this bag into a piping bag for when we get this all onto the cookie sheet. Alright, so we got our prepared cookie sheet here, we got our dough at the corner of the bag, go ahead and just nip off the tip, roughly about a half inch, I think I goofed on this just a little bit, it might have been a little bit on the big side, but that's fine. Essentially you're just going to try to get it all so that you can squeeze it out of one corner and just pipe it out onto the tray. And I want to try to get ourselves into roughly around two inch mounds. I kind of goofed the sizing on this just a little bit, but you know what, at the end of the day it's fine. Just make sure there's enough space between each one so that they have room to pop up. And there goes the camera. Let's try that again. Alright, so back to where we were at, piping onto the tray. Now the recipe uh, states that you should be able to get about 12 of these out of this bag. I This was my first try going at it, so I didn't quite get the full entirety of all 12 puffs, but I tried to do the best that I could, get the shape and sizing on here. Uh, I might do a future take on this video as well where I can show my improved technique on this. I did actually get a much nicer batch coming out in the next round, but for video purposes this is what we got, and we'll go ahead and... Uh, share our future endeavors in a future video at some point. But for now, just getting all of it piped onto the tray. one. Now obviously if you were a professional at this you would try to get them all uniform in the same shape, but again we are the discount bard here so we're doing the best we can. Alright, everything's on the tray now so we're gonna go ahead and grab that egg wash that we made earlier with the single egg yolk mixed with a little bit of water. We're gonna go ahead and give each of these just a light little brushing. Alright, everything's got a nice little egg coating on it, so now the next thing to do is just throw it right into the oven. You want to bake them at 425 for roughly about 15 minutes. There we are. Good to go. Once 15 minutes has passes, we're going to go ahead and bake our... Uh, change our baking temperature down to 375 and then we're going to go ahead and let them brown at that temperature for about another seven to nine minutes. Once that's all set, 
Uh, they are going to be quite hot, but we do want to make sure that we let them cool just a little bit and then take them off the tray. And we're going to go ahead and uh, once we get everything off of the tray, we're going to make a small little incision in each of them so that they have an opportunity to let the steam out. And that way we can properly dry them out in the oven. So here are my puffs. Now, they're not quite very puffy. They came out a little bit flat in this particular round, but that's okay. Uh, they're still going to taste quite good. They're just going to be a little bit less cream puff and more cream pastry. But at the end of the day, you know what? It's still going to taste good. So here we got our little paring knife. We're going to go ahead and just make a little incision in each of them. Just a small one that's enough for us to be able to uh, get some steam coming out of them. And then we'll put them each back onto the cookie sheet. Now do be careful doing this, uh, as always, practice uh, safe knife work. I've gotten pretty comfortable using these in the kitchen so I know where the knife is going to be and trust myself pretty well, but definitely when you're doing this just take extra care just to make sure you don't end up uh, cutting yourself. A couple of these I goofed the shape up a little bit, but again, at the end of the day, even if the plating doesn't look good, it's still going to taste good. This one almost has a tail. Well, I'll go ahead and sample that. Number one rule in the kitchen, if you eat it while you're preparing it, those calories don't count. Alright, now we've got our prepared rolls here. We're gonna go ahead and uh, the oven heat is off. We're gonna go ahead and close it part way, but then we're gonna hold the door open with a wooden spoon just so that it can let the heat out and it'll allow them to dry. We'll do that for about 40 minutes or so just to let the cream puffs get uh, nice and dry so that when we add the cream in a little bit later, it'll remoisten them for a nice texture. So now for the filling itself, we got heavy cream here. We're going to go ahead and get our, you could do this with a stand mixer. I don't have a stand mixer available, so I used a uh, hand mixer instead. We're going to go ahead and use our whisk attachment and just beat it until it starts getting into a nice thicker consistency. Uh, please excuse my uh, uh, eczema on my hands right now. It's kind of been a bad skin day for me, but you know what? I, I use my hands every day and that's what I got them for. So now we've got a slightly thicker consistency here on the heavy cream. Now we're going to go ahead and add in uh, a couple of other little things. We're going to add in some uh, honey, first thing. Let's look at that honey in there. And the last little bit out of there. Actually polished off my jar. Good timing on that. And then we're going to do another uh, teaspoon of vanilla. Now I tend to be a bit of a chaos goblin in the kitchen when it comes to things like that. There are some things that are definitely very important to measure exactly. There are some things that I can pretty pretty well eyeball. That's just one of them. Plus also I just didn't feel like getting out another measuring spoon. Alright, beat that up until we get nice soft peaks here. There we go. That looks like some nice whipped cream filling. And of course, sample it, because that's the job. And here we are. Now we just assemble them. Cut the puffs in half. Or in three pieces if you uh, lose your dexterity and have the thing crumble because it's your first time trying to make it. Get a nice little glop of that filling in there. Put 
the piece on top. And rinse and repeat. So you got a plate that looks something like this. And of course, last but certainly not least, make sure you drizzle that extra bit of honey on top. This is a very not COVID friendly recipe. Make sure you're comfortable sharing germs with people. And of course, bon appetit. Absolutely delicious. Just fun stuff right there. I had a blast with those. I actually did do a uh, another round of those puffs today because uh, my first round didn't quite go as uh, I hoped. Once again, my laptop just does not seem to want to stay in place here today, so let's see. Are you actually going to stay in place this time? Great. Fantastic. So by the way, I did see another uh, karaoke redemption there, so we'll go ahead and just throw that out here real quick before we check on that squash. The adventure begins, they were always beside you, your nerdy best friends, and the DM to guide you, and they rise from the flames for the battles ahead. Villains, beware, cause you're about to be dead. They got magic and flair, they got falchions and cunning, they see over there, there's a monster incoming, inspiration is waiting, rise up, don't think twice, put your fate in your hands, take a chance, <laughs> excuse me, take a chance, roll the dice. This is why we're discount barred. All right, let's go ahead and get that, oh, we got a, oh. Oh, I got, oh, apparently I've got a ranking here. Thank you, uh, Mysterious Hand from the Eight, or apparently I got a 10 for that one. All right, so <laughs> let's go ahead and get that squash out of the oven. All righty. Nice and roasty toasty. That hand from the ether. All right, so now we've got all of our uh, squash business here. I know, we'll get, we'll get to you in a moment, don't you worry. So now here's the interesting part here. So now we gotta take these nice hot cloves of garlic and peel them? Bad hand from the ether. I'm going to go ahead and get these out of the heat. Quick, while he's distracted! I lost ye! Ah! We have fun here. All right, I guess you got to sort of peel it out of the... Wow, this is this is so awkward. I guess the upside is that now you got this nice, you know, roasted garlic. All right. Always stand mysterious hand. Well, that looks pretty roasty toasty. Uh, no, you can make a stand for that. And don't worry, I have not been keeping the mysterious hand starved this whole time. They did have some cottage pie that I brought out during the uh, the break when we were on video earlier. All right, that garlic out of here. This is just. I don't know. I we'll, we'll see. We'll see if doing it this way grants us any advantages. But honestly, I'm not like really sure if uh, doing it here in the peel like this has really helped us at all. All right. So now we got all that business in here. Let's get our squash. Squishy squash, squash, squash. Hey. 
Well, they, they got away with one. Yeah, that's what you get. <laughs> Eating that hot squash there. <laughs> Mysterious hand is 2-0 right now. All right. Let's get our uh, hot pan out of the way here. Yeah, I know. I might have to look into what that problem is, but unfortunately, the problem is that I'm away from my keyboard right now, which makes it really awkward when I'm trying to deal with audio issues. So hopefully it's getting the job done, but I'll have to look into it later and see what's going on. All right. And now, once again, we mash. Yeah, see, this is the thing. I'm actually really impressed at how well I managed to put this setup together considering uh, what little I had to work with. Because I literally have a MXL microphone that I'm talking into here that's going into a phone <laughs> that is uh, working as the webcam. Which is being transferred over Wi-Fi. <laughs> yeah, there's a. This is definitely a, a very you know haphazard setup, but you know all things considered, I'm really happy with how it's turned out. All right, some nice. Mashed up squash. Now, I suppose you could also do this as a puree as well, but I am again following the recipe as it requests. I imagine that for this, you actually might be uh, intended on doing this in something like a mortar or a pistol or something along those lines, but alas, I don't have access to one of those at the moment. So this is what we got. All right. So now, our bowls. Need a bit of the squash. Need a bit of the squash. And of course, got to make sure you get a little bit extra olive oil drizzle. Just a little drizzle. All right. Squash, squish, squash. All right, hand from the ether. You want to grab your squash? All right. Moment of truth. Oh, 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 cheers. Thank you. All right, let's see if this is, uh, let's see how the L's cuisine works out. Mm. That's actually surprisingly tasty. Wow. Oh. Yeah, the garlic comes through nicely. It's got a nice sweetness from the squash. Yep, uh, the, uh, you're going to want to be up here, actually. There you go. And from the ether approves, apparently. Mm. It's it's more chunk. It's not so much soup. It's, uh, it, it's, uh, it's, yeah, yeah. It's got kind of this chunk in it. It's, it's kind of like mashed squash. So instead of mashed potato, it's mashed squash. Oh, last but not least, uh, one last thing we got to do here. So since I done goofed on my first attempt at the uh, cream puffs, I had to go ahead and do it again. And I think uh, 
my second results turned out significantly improved. I, 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 I. Well, you know what? I guess at the end of the day, we are at the end here, so maybe, you know what, go ahead. Have yourself a buff. And, of course, you know, let's go ahead and uh, sample the new one, because let's see how this works. Oh, one other thing. Uh, in the video for the cream puffs, I accidentally omitted when making the cream filling, you're also supposed to add a little bit of creme fraiche uh, to the cream as well, which I did do for this recipe. So let's see how this works out. Oh my god. Holy crap. That's so good. Very much though. Wow. Okay. Yes, the mysterious hand from the ether is life gold. Absolutely. Well, that's all I got for uh, today's show, uh, folks. Thank you so much for joining today for our pilot episode of uh, Bard in the Kitchen. I uh, hope you all had some fun. I hope you all uh, had those uh, stomachs curling and those mouths drooling over some uh, delicious recipes. There's definitely still plenty of other recipes in the Heroes Feast cookbook for me to try to do uh, at some point in the future again. So uh, maybe we'll end up trying this again at some point in the future. Thank you so much for the cheer, Thomas. Really appreciate that there. And utilizing the new emote. God, I love that thing so much. Thank you so much and really appreciate that. And really appreciate all y'all for hanging out today and for letting me be your low-key entertainment and your low-key cook for this evening let's see who's uh who's still on right now who can we throw some uh love over to right now and get a raid going for uh let's see uh oh we've got uh ultimate j and j is currently doing some uh, super smash brothers they're a friend of utihime cosplay i've done some dead by daylight with them a few times they're some good people so let's go ahead and throw some love over their direction and uh Make their night. Thank you all for hanging out tonight, and thank you for letting me be your discount bard. Last couple announcements for this week. We do have another Sea of Thieves session happening this Saturday. And, of course, if you're not watching the Sea of Thieves, you should be checking out Mortal Kombat, which is happening over on the Initiative Order. I believe it's happening at about 6.30. Some amazing folks are doing some amazing cosplay, and it is a... Uh, it's being run by Dragon Rock RPG, or it's a system built by Dragon Rock RPG. I forget exactly what it is. But either way, good people, lots of good people. Send them some support and love over at the Initiative Order. Anyways, thank you all for a great night. Let's send some love over to Ultimate J&J, &J, and I will catch you all on the next one.